I presume the answer will be no. So, in this report, or this document, um, I hesitate to call it a report, so in this document that you've provided, uh, that took you so long to prepare, uh, that says nothing that's not in the public domain, it took you so long to prepare that we could only get it this morning, because you only finished it around midnight last night. Uh, just incidentally, what were you doing for the previous year, if this is what you prepared until 12 o'clock last night? All of this information must have been available on a computer somewhere, and all you had to do was print it. So wh what took so long? I mean, just tell me that first. Uh, Honourable Member, we had to collate all the information. It was not all available on a single laptop. We had to collate it from various sources. Uh, we had to analyse okay. it and put the presentation together. We also wanted it independently vetted to ensure that everything contained in this, in this report uh, is factually correct. I see. You think you succeeded? Yes, I, th I think we have. Wow. So, uh, I put it to you, uh, my view is that you're evading responsibility here. You're ducking all the institutional, the systemic issues that, that point to your own culpability in this matter. And the only things that you've included in this report are exculpatory. I take it you don't agree. Honourable Member, apologies, English is my second language. Can you please explain I can the word tell you, I can put it to you in Afrikaans if you like. Please. Here's the document. What you have as a verslag for you. It's not the paper that you have written on it. All that you have to do is you have to try to be responsible for me. You have to speak no unspeakable thing. For your role in this whole gemors. You speak no unspeakable thing about the end of the year where nothing has happened and in this murderer the lekker life has led. Terwijl allemaal geweet het, jylle dalk uh, correctieve dienste, verseker die staat in sy geheel, geweet het hierdie man loop rond. En jylle is niks gedoen nie, jylle is vir niemand gesê nie. En die, die ergste daarvan is, jylle het nooit vir enige van sy slagoffers laat weet nie. En jylle aanvaar geen aansprekelijkheid nie. Wil jy graag iets sê daarover? Um, Honourable Member, thank you for, for clarifying. Um, I mean, the statement is made that we're not accepting any, any responsibility. I, I cannot agree with that statement. We have, we have disclosed that we have dismissed three members and we've made that information available to the police. The police, in the last few days, arrested one of them. And I, I would like to think that is based on the contribution that we've made. It's not for us to link those individuals to the ultimate crime. That is for the police services to do. So I think, I think it's incorrect to say that we did nothing. Okay, so because I only have uh, you know, a very short space of 30 minutes and I could quite honestly be here for the next four or five days, um, I'd like it if you could keep your answers brief, please. Thank you. So I'm glad you went uh, to, to this issue of you know, not knowing that it was an escape. Uh, until very recently, I think until uh, just during the course of this month still, G4S was insisting that the body that was found in that cell was in fact Tabo Bester. That was your view. And it was articulated again to us on, your, on our visit last week. That that's still your view, regardless of the inconsistencies in the post-mortem report and regardless of the practically irrefutable DNA evidence. g has clung to this version that the body was that of Tabu Bester. Why, why is that? Honourable Chair, that's based on the information that was that was available to us. I, I was not at the, at the briefing last week, so I don't know what, what was said. We, we were only, we asked 
for the pathology report mid last year. We were not handed that report. It's only on the 2nd of May, oh, correction, 2nd of, April, of February this year that we were given <coughs> a copy of the pathology report and the DNA report. Until then, at that stage, we had no evidence other than rumours that there had been an escape or that it was not Tabu Best who had died in that, in that cell. No, I'm sorry, let me, please let me interrupt you because I already told you I don't have time. So keep your answers brief, answer the question, please, nothing more. A discussion we can maybe have when we both got more time. Why did G4S cling to the version that it was Tabu Best's body in that cell, even after it was very clear to everybody else in South Africa that it wasn't? Just answer me that question. Because we were not the primary investigation, investigating authority and we did not have access to the prime evidence, honourable member. And that's your answer? Yes. Wow. I wish we were in court. Um, so you have investigated and f dismissed uh, three people. Are you honestly sitting here this morning telling us that this escape of Hollywood proportions, and no doubt some smart journalist is going to write a book and make a lot of money, was done with the assistance of three people. Is that what you're suggesting? I'm not suggesting that, Honourable Member. I'm saying that those are the individuals who did not follow policy and procedure. But that's just simply not possible. It had to have been so many more. A simple walkthrough of your facility revealed that it had to be so many more. How, how can you honestly sit there this morning and tell not, not me, not the people in this room, you're talking, I hope you understand, to the South African public who have an absolute direct interest in this matter. They have an interest in not having serial rapists and murderers running around the streets. And your job was to make sure that didn't happen, a job you failed at miserably. Do you honestly want to tell people that you think, or that you're satisfied, or that the ambit of your investigation was satisfied after three people were suspended and fired. Really? That's what we are able to say at this stage, Honourable Member. Good Lord. There's the corpse substitution. Who is that person in the cell? Where did they come from? Did they come from inside the prison? Because then your head count wouldn't have matched. Did they come in from the outside? How? Did they walk in? Were they murdered in the prison? Did they come in dead? You can't answer any of these questions. We, we don't know. On, you don't on, know. On a year and a bit later, you don't know. We have provided all information pertaining to the movement of <coughs> our personnel that evening to the SAPs, and it's for them to investigate I see. based on our information. You have no responsibilities. I'm not saying we have no responsibilities. I'm well, saying that we have investigated this matter so. to the extent possible. You appear to be saying you have no responsibilities. You've done what you could. Given bits of paper to other people, and that's it. Wash your hands. Not at all. Well, that's the impression you create. And I want to tell you it's not good enough. It's impossible to believe that this whole operation could have taken place without uh, the greasing of many palms. Where would that money have come from? Whose palms were greased? Which of your officials are living above their means? You don't know because you don't do lifestyle audits. No, we don't. Negotiations with So the Tanzanians wanted to fly to South Africa in a private jet. Is that what you're saying? It's a yes or no answer. No, I'm not going to answer that way. No, not at all. Then don't answer. You can tell others to answer yes or no. No, don't I'm answer. Absolutely not no. in court yet. It's fine. We, we sent a team to negotiate. The, te the team left on the 9th. So it would be initially the extradition or the, if not extradition, is a deportation. So we were advised which is a better one, which is an easier one. So we had to negotiate with that. So th th that was, was raised by the team as we were in contact with the team to say they would be more comfortable if something private rather than the police comes. So we had to respect that. You're fond of the uh, use of the phrase catch-22, and you sometimes apply it appropriately and sometimes you apply it conveniently. 
Uh, a catch-22 situation, you described to the Honourable Swart that uh, you didn't inform the public of the escape uh, because it was a catch-22. It may have alerted Bester that, uh, that you were on the lookout for him uh, and you didn't want to compromise the investigation. Well, yes, but don't you think that uh, the public interest in this instant trumps the investigation of the police that was going absolutely nowhere until January? It also of the public interest that when the arrest is effected, that case stands the test of time. Uh, but already, I don't know why that question comes, because it has been considered that indeed, in re-looking really at things, at least the victims would have been taken on board. I'm getting to the victims, General. I'm getting to the victims. Now we're talking about the public, the South African public, citizens who live in this country are entitled because your job is to make sure they're safe living in this country. That's your job. And you allow a serial rapist and murderer to run around doing as he pleases while you know that that's the case and you don't inform the citizens of this country. And you say it's a catch-22. Well, Chairperson, let me repeat. We're not making news. We're investigating. It is important then, now, and forever to see the police, they investigate, and they put those people out of circulation. To say you'll announce that it be careful. People will say, now Taylor is mad. You go and get that person, and we have been on that track. That's why today, at 2 o'clock, it was expected that the other one appears in court, the other one is at Mampura and all that. It's the work that has been followed, including, there is this famous one, maybe I can come to it, including to say uh, the, the arrest uh, in, 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 in Arusha towards Kenya has nothing to do with the South African authorities. It's got a lot to do. Maybe those are things that will be kept there until the case comes and all that. The, the, major, yeah. the, 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 the major work of the police is very defined. It's very defined on 205. Investigate, prevent, and the, indeed, I fully agree with you. At this one, it would have been on the limited way of talking with the families, the victims, Indeed, that point is taken on board. But broadly, it would be good to say this has happened and we have arrested those people, people of South Africa, as it has happened. Minister, I, I would like to say two things to you, because I probably only have a minute left. You don't. <laughs> I, I don't. Yankee, give me a minute. <laughs> you give me a minute. I will give you that minute give five. Uh, so that you assist the committee going forward. To say two things to you. One, please don't lecture me on what the police do and don't do. I know what they do, I know what they don't do. I did it for years. You can teach me nothing about police investigations with respect. Secondly, you, and I'm glad you take the point and I'm glad that you concede it, it's an absolute disgrace that the victims of this man were not warned, were not prepared, were not protected. It's an absolute disgrace. And you should hang your head in shame, all of you. It's no way to treat people. But the most important thing is, answer me this. If while you were so busy protecting the secrecy of your investigation and deciding not to warn the South African public who incidentally uh, expect all of us here to protect them, and we've all failed, all of us. If Bester had murdered another woman, had raped another woman, what would you have said then? Well, I'm not a speculator. That has not happened. Yes, it did, it did not happen. And, and secondly, I know you are a prosecutor, a, a, a vintage one for that matter. But, but don't, tell me, don't tell me about investigating and the police. 
you only deal with that after they've investigated. Yes, prosecution, indeed, but investigation, absolutely no, not for you. Thank you, thank you very much. Honorable John, five minutes before, I want you to round up. So if your time expires, you won't get a response. Honorable Breitenbach. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, I'm going to start with uh, the Minister of Justice because I see that he's uh, becoming uncomfortable sitting there for the whole day and I'm scared he falls asleep. So I'm going to uh, make an effort to wake him up a little. So, uh, Minister, you're the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services. It's a big job, very big portfolio. It doesn't matter that you have two deputies, each one helping on a different thing. You're responsible, overarchingly, for justice and correctional services in this country. Do you agree? Yeah. And it's your job, Minister, to ensure the safety of South African citizens. It's your job in, as the... A Minister of Justice and Correctional Services in conjunction with the rest of the criminal justice cluster to ensure the safety of South African citizens. Make sure that they're safe in their homes every night. Is that correct? Yeah. And then I presume that you'll agree with me that in this particular instance you have failed. Yes, that's why we apologize to the nation. Good. Um, because we, we don't, uh, we take responsibility in terms of the act, the overall responsibility as the custodian of um, prisons in this country is the Department of Correctional Services. Mm. Yes. Well, to your credit then, you uh, take responsibility and it's admirable quality. But you're a lawyer yourself. You're, you, you've been a practicing attorney. You understand about culpability and you understand about culpability of the state. You understand about your failure to protect both the public at large and more importantly the victims of this particular offender. And when you knew, let's say at the best for you, when you knew in October of 2022 that Bester had escaped or that it was very likely that he'd escaped, what steps did you take, you, to ensure that the victims of, of uh, Bester were informed, adequately supported, adequately protected? What steps did you take? Yeah, Honorable Brandenburg, as I've said, um, after the telephone call with the, with the inspecting judge, I immediately called the National Commissioner. To, eh? Yeah, yeah, because I was shocked to the core, and I did mention it to, to the judge that uh, this is uh, something, yeah, something else. But yeah, I will definitely engage the National Commissioner, which I did, to prioritize this matter and to deal with the issues of the investigations as urgently as possible. And that's where... He told me that already there is an investigation that is ongoing, which I asked why I was not aware of this thing. He says, no, it's because they did not have enough information to bring. They were still at the preliminary stages of the investigation, the, the investigators. So, Minister, forgive me, but that's just not good enough. You phone up the commissioner, he tells you that there is an investigation. They haven't bothered to inform you. Uh, because they don't have enough information. The information that they have is that there was a dead body in a cell in Bloemfontein that doesn't belong to Tabo Bester. And Tabo Bester is no longer in that prison. He's a serial rapist, he's a murderer, he's convicted. He has victims out there. My question to you was, what steps did you take, you, to inform his victims, to protect his victims, to support his victims? Yeah, Honorable Brandenburg, it's not correct. In terms of the timelines, at the time when I spoke to the National Commission, he told me that 
the investigation is still at the preliminary stage. And the preliminary stage, when I asked, what do you mean, what is it that you have? I mean, he said, no, we still need to get the various reports that relates to confirming whether indeed this guy has escaped. Because one, um, G4S is still insisting that the body that died there is the one of, or that they found, <laughs> is the one of, uh, <laughs> of <laughs> yeah, the person who died there is, the, is this Mr. Tabopest. So at that, that at the time, that is what was happening. And secondly, as you will be aware, Honorable uh, Bradenberg, it then becomes the responsibility of the corrections unit in the departments to inform uh, the victims and deal with them because, I mean, it's all over the country. And I did uh, engage the National Commissioner. I think the National Commissioner can take it from there because I, my responsibility deals with oversight and also to check whether what should be done is indeed done. I differ from you, Minister. I think your responsibility uh, entails everything. It's a big job. You've accepted that responsibility. And you can't pass the buck, which is what you're trying to it do. It is not in terms of the Correctional Services Act. Uh, I'm, not about the I'm not talking the, about the Act. I'm not talking about the Act. The, the responsibility, and Sorry, you will Minister. always... Ah. Sorry, Minister. Ah. I think let's give each other space. Uh, to, we, we can't uh, talk oh, past each other. My apology. I'm not talking about the Act, uh, Minister, and you know it. I'm talking about your responsibility as a lawyer, as a human being, as a Minister of Justice. Don't tell me that that is circumscribed by the Act. That, that's, a, that's a poor show, it's an indictment on you. And I honestly thought you were better than that. You have a deputy sitting next to you. Did you phone him up and say, this thing has happened? Do you know about it? What are you doing about it? And will you please sort out the victims, some sort of initiative to protect them, to support them? Did you do that? Honorable Bredenbach, you are the proponent of saying we need to give professionals the independence to do their job. While we follow up, while we look at them, while they give us reports, but you cannot also be the one who also becomes the National Commissioner, the Accounting Authority and the Accounting Officer. With regards to the Deputy Minister, as I've said, that when I got this thing, the first call I made was to the National uh, Commissioner, for example. And at that time, I did not even inform my staff, for example, um, that I had this discussion with the inspecting judge, and this is his view, uh, that there could be this thing. Because I thought that this is very sensitive. I must limit it as far as possible. And the National Commissioner, when he has got preliminary information and reports, he will be able to inform the Deputy Minister. So, Minister, I would ask you to keep your answers a little shorter than that because you're taking up my 15 minutes. Uh, all I can say to you is that, in my view, you fell short of the mark. 